What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 WWE wrestling spots that make zero sense. I know you've seen it over the years. If you've seen any wrestling, there's some spots that just, when you really think about it, that don't make a lick of sense. For example, the infamous, everyone's crowded under one spot for whatever random reason, and one person goes to the top and they jump off, and then he jumps into the crowd, and the people that are nowhere near the people that's in the middle of this little crowd they just fall for no reason it's never made sense to me never does never will but uh appreciate all the love and support this should be a good video let's get right into this in pro wrestling that avoid all sense of logic and reasoning these spots make no sense whatsoever and completely draw fans out of the illusion that is pro wrestling mm -hmm. now, some of the spots on this list have been around for decades and there's no justification for their existence other than they are a common part of a standard wrestling match but which ones are they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 signature WWE spots one, that make zero sense. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Submission Moves on the Announce Table. A WWE is very much focused on the visual parts of pro wrestling. Moves should look exciting and compelling as a viewer, and this preference is often favored over moves making any logical sense. But one of the moves that is common in WWE is submission moves being conducted on the announce table. While seeing a signature submission move performed on a table is a fantastic sight visually, mm -hmm. what difference does the table make to the pain inflicted? Yeah. Well, the answer <laughs> is zero. The pain level of the submission move would be the exact same no matter where the move was being executed. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a spot that is focused on creating a visually compelling moment rather than anything with any kayfabe aims of a wrestling match involved. Number 9. Clearing Items from an Announce Table Yeah, that's that's always like a, a, a thing that I've noticed. I'm like, why are they doing that? Why don't you just throw them on there? I'm not about to clear the table. So it's a safer landing. No, I'm just going to throw you on there. <laughs> Speaking of spots involving the announce table, one of the most frustrating things as a viewer is when wrestlers get set to put their opponent through a table, but they decide to clear the table before commencing with their move. Now, some may say that the logic of this is that they want a clean break, but surely a move being conducted with various items on the table would be way more impactful. Yeah. The items on the table usually include a laptop, pens, and TV monitors, and this would naturally inflict way more pain on the opponent. So, shouldn't they just leave them on? Number 8, yeah, moving into position thought. for top roof moves. The top roof moves are some of the most exciting moves in all of pro wrestling. Moves such as flying elbow drops and the mm -hmm. frog splash are iconic and always receive a huge reaction from the crowd. Whilst visually amazing to witness, the illusion of the move is often broken when the camera captures the person taking the move yeah, shifting scoot, themselves scoot into position. Over in the, to the, spot. the individual taking the move often moves around to make sure that their opponent will land the move safely and effectively, and when the camera captures this live, the move begins to lose its luster. Mm -hmm. yeah, it goes without saying that it's hard to avoid. WWE in particular should try to avoid showing the opponent on the mat as much as possible, and predominantly focus the camera on the wrestler on the top rope who's about to perform the aerial maneuver. It's all about camera work, really. If, if you're watching at home, the camera work really helps a lot of the matches. We've seen plenty of times where somebody, the camera's zoomed in on someone and that person doesn't actually hit the person that they're supposed to hit. It, they, they, they fake it. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about camera work. If the camera angle is on point and they're looking at the right thing at the right time, it could sell the match for the, the people watching at home. Or make it look number better. seven trying to escape the fireman's carry now the fireman's carry is the oh, setup yeah. move to execute legendary <laughs> finishing moves they just such be as the waving the little feet. They just be waving adjustment. Their feet one of the flaws of the fireman's carry is that it is extremely rare to see wrestlers attempt to fight out of it yeah why is it surely once a wrestler is on their opponent's shoulders they know a devastating move is coming so why not at least pretend to fight out of the move Set wrestlers, including Seth Rollins, have mastered this in recent years. Yeah. As whenever Rollins is put into a five man carry to position, struggle. he will do everything he can to sell the fact he's trying to escape the move. This approach from Rollins should be replicated whenever the fireman's mm -hmm. carry is performed, but it seems unlikely that anything is ever going to change in relation to this particular move. Number six, no headshots allowed. 
And for over a decade now, yeah. WWE have had a blanket ban on chair shots to the head. Thanks Obviously. to research into concussion-related injuries, WWE found it best that chair shots to the head aren't allowed under any circumstances. This has created a few issues from a storytelling perspective, as whenever a wrestler uses a chair in a match or in a segment, they seem to be targeting every single body part other than their yeah, head. Yeah. If the wrestler in question load their arch nemesis so much, why wouldn't they perform a chair shot to the head? <laughs> Bex. Now, this ruling has created some awkward moments over the past few years where wrestlers mid-match have actively had to avoid hitting each other in the head. Flawed logic aside, this directive from WWE is for the best, as concussion-related matters is something that every combat sport should take seriously. Yeah, anything chair shots to the head, definitely it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where they gotta really be careful. Even with putting your hands up to your head, sometimes you may not get your hands up in enough time, so, you know, they you can still end up potentially getting a concussion in. They are not trying to pay no lawsuits, so... At the end of the day, it's safer for the wrestlers to, you know, just take different chair shots to the back or side or whatever, but not to the head because it can be very dangerous, especially if someone ends up retiring. They end up getting a case of CTE or some type of brain damage. Now it's like, what happened, you know? Number five, super moves. Now, there are certain finishing moves which are simply generic standard wrestling moves. For instance, The Rock's finishing move, The People's Elbow, is literally an elbow drop. But why yeah. is The Rock's version of the move more deadly than other wrestlers' <laughs> version of the exact same move? Additionally, if the elbow drop was indeed such a legitimate move, why doesn't every single wrestler on the roster steal the move? The same logic can be applied to There's Hulk leg Hogan's drop. leg drop of doom. This was Hogan's finishing move throughout his career, but why was his so impactful? Yep. <laughs> why could Hogan secure a win over the likes of Ric Flair, Triple H, and Randy Savage with the move, but if the leg drop was done by any other wrestler, it would barely receive a one count? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting it's question weird, that nobody can weird, truly offer a sensible answer think about to. It. <laughs> Number four, climbing the steel cage. The majority of cage matches, particularly in WWE, have the stipulation that a wrestler can win either by escaping over the top of the cage or escaping through the cage door. Mm -hmm. This stipulation has resulted in a strong number of cage matches having no sense of logic. Take for instance when a wrestler is down in the match, their opponent will ascend to the top of the cage in order to escape rather than simply walking out of the cage door. I've thought about that too, I was like, you can just request for the door to be open, just, just. Hey, open up the door, he's out. <laughs> Match is over. Why do they do this? From WWE's perspective, it makes for a better visual and adds to the drama, but yeah. it makes the stipulation of the match completely pointless. Luckily, there is an easy way to fix this. In future, a cage match should only be won via escape over the top of the cage, then this thing completely removes the illogical flaw from the match. Which would be cool. I'm, I'm all for that stipulation. If they do a cage match, you can only get out the only way you can win is escaping from the top. That's it, climbing the cage, and the first person to hit feet hit the ground, they win. Because usually that's how it ends up happening anyway. Number three, the inability to ascend a ladder. Oh, this the ladder one match right remains here, one boy. of the most popular matches in WWE history. However, that doesn't mean that the match type doesn't have established issues. Mm -hmm. One of the most frustrating things when watching a ladder match is when a wrestler will suddenly forget how to climb a ladder. <laughs> a wrestler will be unable to climb as they wait for their opponent to get in position for the next spot. Mm -hmm. The wrestler seems to go in slow motion as if there is no urgency whatsoever in the match. The spot is flawed because the wrestler can simply pull off every other single move in the match, but when it comes to climbing, climbing a basic the ladder, ladder nope. they encounter a major issue. <laughs> Number two, dives to the outside. Now, over the past few years, the dive to the outside has become one of the most commonly used moves in wrestling. The move used to be presented as a special move and will receive a thunderous reaction from the audience. However, the move is now just as common as a super kick or yeah. a suplex. Well, one of the worst things about the move is that it completely takes away from the escapism of pro wrestling. Whenever the move is about to be performed, one or sometimes several talents will be standing outside the ring just, just waiting. waiting to catch their opponent. <laughs> yeah, just... This makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Why are they standing there just to safely catch their opponent? This flaw has been exposed thanks to the overusage of the move and how wrestlers seemingly have no idea how to safely catch their opponents without looking ridiculous. It's not just fans who have extensively called out the move, as wrestling personalities such as Randy Orton and Jim Ross have spoken at length about how the move is overused and how it removes a match from a sense of reality. This is a topic which Ross feels insanely passionate about, and this is what he had to say about the matter on his Grilling JR podcast. 
I told a kid the other day at AEW that everybody does the same effing spot. <laughs> All you guys go outside, you cluster mm -hmm. up like coils. You stand there in a huddle, friends and foes together yep. side by side, so you can catch some leaping idiot going over the top <laughs> who never wins with this move. Yep. Is he right? And number one. JR is so spot on with that, bro. He so spot on. <laughs> Just sitting there. Whoa! <laughs> like, bro, just move out the way! The corner stomp. Without a doubt, the most nonsensical spot in all of wrestling is the dreaded corner stomp. This is a spot which sees a wrestler pull themselves into the corner turnbuckle and they oh, are then yeah. to hold themselves in position yep. whilst their opponent performs <laughs> they just a stomp on them. There. This spot makes no sense. Why on earth is a wrestler holding themselves up in position for the spot? This was a spot which was made popular by Alberto Del Rio during his time in WWE. The spot has to be abolished from existence yeah. with immediate effect. Whenever the spot occurs, the WWE commentary team struggle to explain what is yeah. happening. Bro, he's just holding the himself. Pure logic that the move involves. But there you have it, folks. Ten signature WWE spots. I ain't gonna lie to you. That doesn't make a lick of sense. Like, when you really think about it. They're literally just holding themselves, waiting to get stomped on. Like, they're looking up at their opponent. I've never understood that. Like, bro, just, yeah, get rid of that move. Just get rid of it. It doesn't make any kind of sense, man. Oh, uh, but this was a good video, man. We see a lot of these nonsensical moments in wrestling. So I want y'all to comment down below. Let me know which one of these spots do you feel like should definitely be abolished in just all the professional wrestling. Me, personally, I do think the whole everyone bunching up together to catch one person spot, I do think you can kind of get rid of that. Uh, it only makes sense if, like, people are brawling, but usually they're just sitting there. I don't know what the hell they be doing. Honestly, you can get rid of that spot and the holding yourself up to wait for your opponent to stomp on you spot. Get rid of those. I think those need to be abolished. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 100K. I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.